doing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. We'll be blessed because we came. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Let us our hearts begin to worship We'll be blessed because we came We'll be blessed because we came Good morning. Welcome to today's Sunday service. Um, today's call to worship. Is taken from Psalm chapter 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over you, over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Uh, now let's continue with uh, a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for um, gathering us here on uh, this platform again, another Sunday. I thank you for the, yeah, the technology that allows us to do so. And I pray for this, um, this Sunday, this morning, that we would listen to what you have to say to each one of us this morning with um, whatever we're struggling with and, um, you know, going through with life, Lord, that, yeah, we would be able to cast our burdens and our worries onto you, Lord. Um, and just give us, um, give us peace and uh, the perspective that you um, are the creator. Um, you keep everything good and, and working and going and that, um, that you will take care of us. And you will watch over us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Let's all praise our God together.
Today's first scripture reading is taken from Psalm 37, verses 7 to 17. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land, and enjoy peace and prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous, and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword, and bend the bow, to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those whose ways are upright. But their swords will pierce their own hearts, and their bows will be broken. Better the little that the righteous have, than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. This is the word of the Lord.
Good morning, church. Uh, I want to welcome everyone again, and good to see you guys, uh, even online, even most of you have not uh, turned on your camera. I cannot see your face, but uh, I can imagine you are here. <laughs> and, uh, and thank you so much uh, for coming to uh, join the worship together. And I believe in this season of life, we really need to get together uh, to pray and to worship. You know, um, Texas have a, have a snowstorm, right? And uh, also during the pandemic, um, I'm always thinking about the end time. The, um, and then somehow I'm thinking about how we can survive, how I can survive or my family can survive a little bit more um, during the tribulation, during the end time, right? The end of the world, something like that. So I'm thinking uh, kind of like a, a little bit crazy idea. I'm like uh, checking out about the uh, indoor heater, like uh, if there is like no electricity like the Houston or like the Texas, right? And then and then it is the winter time, how can we survive? And then I'm searching for like indoor heater, I'm searching for how, how should I store some of the water and some of the food. Uh, because I was a, a scout leader, so uh, be prepared, right? Always be prepared. Uh, somehow when I evaluate this kind of mentality, I'm thinking, oh, I kind of like want to take control in everything. I want to like be prepared. I, I'm not saying be, be prepar have preparation is bad, but I'm thinking God is reminding me that uh, I should let go. I should let, let, let some, because we cannot know what is happening, what, what, what will going to happen. And so letting go is something that we should learn. And interesting also because of the Lent season is like now, uh, as a Christian, we should also think about uh, what should we let go. Um, so last week we talked about one thing that you uh, thinking to uh, sacrifice for God, to uh, fast for God. I don't know whether you have that plan yet, but if you have not uh, have that plan yet, you can you can try this week again. You can do it. So I would like to uh, invite you. To close your eyes now to have a moment of silence because this is a lens season and we really want you guys to remembering to remember god um, more and so let's uh, close our eyes and think about what should we let go for god Let's pray together. Lord, let, let us to set apart this Lent season to remember you more, to humble ourselves. Lord, we really need uh, to learn how to let go because you said in the scripture, your way is higher than, your, than our way and your will is higher than our will. Lord, we just want to surrender once again to you to your time, to your schedule, to your will, and to your way. I pray for every single one of us here, including myself, that maybe we have something that we want, but we never get it. Maybe we have something that we're about for a long time, and there seems like no way out for us. We, we want the things that will be settled according to our plan, according to our schedule, and or even according uh, to our will. So mercy, Lord, let us to learn how to let go of, of, for our, of our like, own, own agenda and, and start to believe in you once again, who care about us and love us, even die for. Lord, you are good God. You know everyone's situation in here. Before we pray you, you already know. Lord, let us remember you more. Without you, we are nothing. Father, mercy on us. Let us to set apart this time, this land season for you. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' name, 
we pray. Amen. Okay, uh, today's second scripture reading is taken from Mark chapter 1, verses 14 to 28. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue, who was possessed by an impure spirit, cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly, come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this, a new teaching and with authority? He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Okay, so um, we are continuing our journey of uh, the Gospel Mark, and uh, we are still in uh, chapter one. And last time, if you remember, is about the kingdom of God. Uh, kingdom of God, there's so many elements inside. I, I talk about the two things. Uh, the first thing is the peace. Um, the peace is not about only about the uh, peace of mind, the inner peace. But it is also about the concept of the Hebrew uh, shalom, right? It is talking about the healing, talking about reconciliation, it's talking about uh, the right relationship with one another and the right relationship uh, with God. And also we talk about the justice, about the um, God is like uh, in, uh, in his concept about justice is not what is only what is right only is like about uh, the justice for the poor, for the oppressed. And today we are talking about how we can participate in this kingdom. And the, and the key is following Christ. And the theme of today is being attracted by Jesus' uniqueness. We follow Christ by surrendering ourselves to him, even we don't have all the answers yet. So in the beginning, in the, uh, verse 16, it said, As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. So Jesus saw like two fishermen over there, maybe like more. And then there was a brother, Simon, that means Peter and, and Andrew. They, they are there. And then kind of like subtle, and Jesus just says three words, come follow me. And then, and then he said, he, he, he followed, he said, and I will send you out to fish for people. As you may, as you may all know, like um, to fish for people, many translations is talking about uh, to become the fisher, uh, fisher for men. That means to, you can evangelize people, you can uh, get more people uh, to follow Christ as well. And and this is, this is the first calling of the first group of disciples. And that is the discipleship, right? And there, there's many uh, discussion about discipleship. There's so many like uh, different definition about discipleship. Uh, I have presented so many different uh, definitions as well before, but there's like the, in a sim very simple form, uh, discipleship means 
following Christ simply, right? Just following Christ. And I want to pause here a little bit. Just want to ask a question about your did you did you follow did you follow Christ or how many years did you follow Christ? Uh, you know, in the Chinese church culture, we are not really talking about following Christ. I'm not saying we are not following Christ, but we are more into we are not a follower of Christ, but we are saying uh, we are believer of Christ or we are believing in Jesus, right? Uh, so we are talking about belief more than a follower in a Chinese context. Um, but no matter what they are, they're just, they are the same, right? If you believe, you follow, right? You, you need to follow and you need to believe. But the question I want to ask, like, how many years did you follow? Maybe many of us here, they born in the church. Uh, I'm not saying you, you are, uh, the church is a hospital for you, right? But you, you, you are here because uh, your parents bring you when you are like a newborn baby in the church. And then now you are 20 some year, uh, like many years later, you're 20 some uh, uh, years of age and you already like very like uh, become a, a young adult. And then so, so that means you have been following Christ for maybe like 20 years. Then I will ask a follow up question about can you give me a proof that you are following Christ? Can you prove that you are following him? And maybe you are thinking about so many things, but one thing you need to, you need to, um, you, you can prove me is, did you ever transform? Transformation is like the result or the consequence of following Christ. And transformation the definition is here is like a complete change in something into an other thing. So it is not like you can change your, you can only change your hands and any other thing you will not change. No, it is a complete change. Transformation is a complete change. So it is like you are changing, like in a biblical concept, it's like from old self to new self or like an old creation, whoever is in Christ, the old has past but the new has come you are you are becoming new creation right that is like a new thing you you are you you are you you will you you die with christ and then you resurrect and then you have a new life and and that is a transformation and and you need to think about uh after those years you have been like following or believing in christ what did you transform and I would point out one major thing that we need to transform because transformation in the kingdom is not just the appearances. Some, some people really appearance like maybe more tight and needy, I don't know, tidy and, and neat. And, but one thing is important is about the value system need to be changed, need to be transformed. The value system is inside us. And that is what we believe is like kind of like uh, what we what we value most, right? And interestingly, the world and the kingdom are so different in the value system. For example, uh, in this world, people will say like money is everything, right? You you may you may not believe in that, but think about why you go to university, why you go to college, why you study so hard. It's because you want to find a job. Why you need a job? It's because you need money. Why you need money? And then you will be secure. And, and if that is your only thoughts, and then your value system will be really lean to like money is everything. But in the kingdom, you know, in the kingdom, money is not everything, but Christ is everything. So to transform from money is everything to Christ is everything is a long, long process. So that transformation is, is the, the discipleship, is the, that process is the discipleship, right? But today I want to give you a secret about how we can transform, be more like Christ. Um, that is not a formula, but that is a secret. It is actually in verse 18. 
In verse 18, it says, at once they left their nets and followed him. So that is that is like um, the secret. At once they left. After Jesus, like just say three words, like come follow me. And they at once they left. Uh, maybe you, you doubt why they can do that. We will, we will talk about, discuss a little bit at the, at the end of the sermon, why they can do that. But what is the secret here in verse 18? I'm thinking the secret is surrender. So if you want to transform, if you want, if you say you are following Christ, the key secret, the feathers here is to have an act of surrendering. So Again, in this world and in the kingdom are so different. In this world, surrender is not a good thing, right? If you are in a, in a war, in a battle, you surrender, that means you are, you are weak, you are not good enough, right? Even in a volleyball game, we can surrender. <laughs> if, we, if we do not have enough players, we need to surrender, right? And surrender is like a total surrender. You, you cannot like, oh, let's surrender the first set. And then the second set, more people will come and then we can fight again. No, if you surrender, you surrender everything. That is the key. If you want to follow Christ, if you want to transform, if you want to become a disciple of God, this is the secret, surrender. Why surrender is hard? Because we have pride. One of the core sin that, that means we, we want, kind of like, because we are so prideful, we want to become like God. And because of that, then we don't want to surrender because we are okay, we are good. But in his kingdom, God wants us to surrender our life to him. And same as 19 to 20 in, uh, in the other, it's when, when Jesus went, have gone a little bit farther, he saw James, son of the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, James and John. Mm -hmm. And they are also preparing the, the net. And then, and, and, and Jesus called them, and same thing happening here. Uh, verse uh, 20, without delay, he called them, and they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat, with the hired man and follow him. So, again, total surrender. They just, they just did that right away. We need that. But you may, you may, you may think, hey, I, I don't know everything about Christ. I, I did not well prepare. How can I come and follow? How can I surrender everything? You know. Jesus said only three things. He did not say like, "Come, if you have, if you have a pure motive, if you, if your heart is good, if you read all the all the uh, chapters in the Bible, or if you, if you go to the church, attend the church regularly, if you go to Alithia fellowship, then, then you come for me." No, he did not say that. He said, "Come, follow me." He just warned us to follow by what by just try and error you know that that is the thing that is the process that is the learning part we we don't know we we cannot have all the answer before we follow christ um i, I think of one one uh, example of myself i i love i love to i love music I, 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 I admire people can can do like instrument really well. They can play instrument very well. So I learned many instrument, but I cannot play well because maybe my finger, I don't know, maybe too big. <laughs> um, but I learned, I used like 10 years to play three songs in the piano, <laughs> only three songs. And the first song I cannot compete, but this is the first song that I, I learned to play. Uh, this is by Beethoven. Um, I did not have this. Uh, I just searched it. This, this. Uh, I don't know how to read this. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this because it, it is a German. Maybe Furry Lisi. I don't know. 
but if I sing it out, you, you, everyone will know this song. As I did, 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 did. I, I love this song. Uh, so because of that, it attract me, and then so I learn. Uh, I cannot finish. I don't know. I don't even know the whole, whole, whole song, but I try. And you know, this is kind of like a China era. This is kind of like how we follow Christ. I'm thinking about our mentoring. We have a mentorship project here. Three working adults and six university students become a mentor and now mentoring like、uh, nine high school students. I remember we have like five、uh, long light、um, kind of like a training for them, and then and then they are they 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 after that five five times、uh, we we are asking them to go and、um, mentoring other people. Uh, but then, interestingly, they they come out after the after three time or two times.、Uh, I I interview them one on one, and then most of them have the same question: is like, what then? What can I do now? After everything, what what should I do? They don't know what they can continue. You know that that is the thing.、Uh, that that is the thing. We try and error. We we cannot have all the answer. We don't know. Even I as a Pastor, right? We 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 train in a seminary. I have been going to two times in a seminary, and and I got a master divinity. I am the master in divinity. I am, I, I I think I can master everything. No, I don't know everything. I don't know even、um, everything about the pastoral ministry. I cannot. I do not know. Then how can you be a pastor? Try and error. So I don't know even. I don't even know. Am I doing something right? <laughs> But the thing is, that is a process. That is a process about transformation. That is a process about surrender. There's a process in this discipleship. So we are following Christ by total surrender and try and error. We need to learn that, and and it is okay to to be to to make some mistakes, right? And After Jesus、uh, called these、uh, two brothers、uh, to follow him, he went to the synagogue.、Uh, he they went to the cabinet and then go、uh, because they are Sabbath. They went to synagogue, and if we read the New Testament, we will always see like even Jesus or even like、uh, Paul, they are going to the synagogue to preach the gospel. But you may think, hey, why Old Testament do not have any synagogue before?、Right? And even now we have a synagogue in Bayview Avenue. This is the the、uh, synagogue in Bayview Avenue, right? But in the first century,、um, the the、uh, the synagogue is like this. There's like there there is like some、uh, I cannot say benches, but some some of the uh, uh, sitting area, and they can gather together. Why? In the Old Testament, they do not have、uh, a a synagogue because they have a temple. Everything is surrounded by the temple. Every everyone is surrounded by a temple. They will go to the temple. They will pray. They will sacrifice. They will give offering to God in the temple. The center of their belief is the temple. But interestingly, in the end of the Old Testament, the temple was actually destroyed by the enemies. So, in the Jesus time, the temple there was the second temple, but in between the first temple and the second temple,、uh, they want to gather together. They don't have a place, so they 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 build up that kind of like a smaller、uh, synagogue. But one thing happened in the synagogue is they create a set of oral law during the time.、Uh, Moses was getting the the Torah, right? Moses, there's a written law from there, like Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and then, but because of the synagogues, the 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 they they, they get it together. They do not do, they cannot do that.、Um, what God want them to do, they cannot sacrifice. They can only do. They they the only thing they can do is like,、uh, they are they are discussing. They are interpreting、uh, the 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 written law. They are doing the things 
they are talking about the law. They have studied the scripture. That is great, but they did not do anything out of it. So there will be uh, so that there, there was like two set of laws coming out, written law and the oral law. The oral law is the interpretation of the law that were not recorded in the Torah. In the book of Matthew, according to the Sermon on the Mount, the Jesus always talk about, you heard someone said that, but truly I tell you, the, tell you, this is the way, right? So there's always, there's a tension between the oral law and the written law. They, but they are doing something like that during this time of the synagogue. Uh, in the synagogue, it's also, they, it means they're getting together and they have, a, they have a leaders and they have a guest speakers, just like the church. And like today, the church uh, have, uh, like the synagogue is like inviting Jesus to speak for them. And we even know the the synagogue's leader's name, Jairus. They uh, he he has a he has a a, a daughter, um, um, dying, uh, twelve years old dying. If you go to um, Mark five, you will know. Um, so, this is the background about the synagogue. But sounds like a little bit sounds like a church. Think about right. It, we we are now we are like listening to to my interpretation of the scripture uh and also always we are going to the church to do the bible study when we have time right and we have sunday school we talk about the scripture but one thing need to be done is we need to go and make disciples we cannot like just talk about the scripture we cannot like just stay at the church but we need to go at that time because they are only stay in the synagogue and they talk about the scripture they listen to the scripture only, but they cannot do the sacrifice. They cannot do the things that God want them to do. And problem came. So in verse 22, they feel they Jesus, when he is preaching, when he is reading the scripture, when he is teaching, so different. In verse 22, is that the people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as a teacher of the law. He came and then so different. You know, we are we are thinking why those brother Peter, Andrew, James, and John surrender everything right away. Why? This is the reason. Because he is different. Why they are following Christ? Because Christ is different. You know, this is the magnetic po positive and negative, right? Attract attraction is like you are being attracted by a different thing. Mona and I were so different. Mona is so serious. To me, I am not that serious. I am a little bit like laid back, right? And then I will be, I, I am attracting uh, by, 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 by Mona's, like how can people be so, so serious? Why, why you don't do things so serious? But for me, uh, uh, he, she is attracted by, by me, like um, we are so different. You know, that is kind of things is that happen on earth. And and Jesus have some new teaching and with authority. He is so different. And one of the new teaching, I believe his new teaching for us in here is mainly teaching about his love. One of the main teaching of Jesus so different from us is his love. And I can say also his grace. You know, uh, without his love, we don't know uh, we don't know how how to how to live on earth right uh, if you read uh, the Old Testament some of the Psalms uh, are a little bit embarrassed because they are talking about um, uh, as praying to praying to God to kill the enemies to destroy everyone who is against us right but in the New Testament when Jesus came he gave us a new set of new teaching he said, to love one another. Also, he asks us to love our enemy, even those who are persecuting us. We need to pray for them. We need to love them. This is a new teaching for us. And because there is like so difference uh, in, 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 in this world, so it attract people to follow him. And there is like impure, impure spirit, like uh, uh, over there 
and and then they know who Jesus is. They believe in Jesus. They know who He is. He said, "What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God." You know, demons believe in Jesus. In Book of James, it said, "You believe that there is one God." Good. Even demons believe that, and shudder. Demons believe in Jesus, but there's no love there. We believe in Jesus. We need to love him. That is the main difference between them. And you know, this is the whole kind of the, the picture of how to fall in Christ. If you go back to here, you will understand. If this is not a formula, but we this is kind of the, the way how we fall in Christ. When we see the difference, then we will commit a a surrender to an act of surrendering to Christ. But following Him, even surrender is like try and error. After the process, the whole process, it is not an overnight process. It is like lifelong process, and then we transform to a new person. And this is the thing that we can think about. Also, how we can ask people、uh, to come—not just to come to the church, but to come to follow Christ. When they can see our life a difference, but how can we be different? Then we need to transform. We need to first transform, be more like Christ. Then other people will see us, and then when we invite them to come and follow Jesus, then they will surrender. They will try, try and error. They will try to learn. So you remember this. This is the main theme that we are talking about: being attracted by Jesus' uniqueness, difference. We fall in Christ by surrendering ourselves to Him, even we don't have all the answers. All the disciple that、uh, Jesus called in 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 this chapter, their whole life. Or their whole world is in him, the Sea of Galilee, because they are fishing.、Um, they will invest their time. They invest everything in this sea, in into this sea, and but once they left everything from here to follow Christ, they experience the brand new world. For Peter, the first、um, uh, picture in here. He was the first person who stand up and preach the gospel to the thousand people in the in the day of Pentecost, and then three thousand people, three thousand people come and follow Christ at that time, and the church was born. If he is still a fisherman, he will never see that play, pay,、uh, see that moment in his life. But Jesus promised him he will become a fisher. Of men, and so he really see that in his own eyes, and the and the other brother, the other picture in here is actually the last disciple on earth,、uh, as Apostle John. He was in the islands of Patmos, and Patmos is like he was having a a great revelation, great vision from God. So he wrote it down and become. The book of Revelation, and and these two person who has been transformed, who has been following Christ, and his world become way way bigger than just the Sea of Galilee. So how about you? Do you want to follow Christ? Do you want to transform? It is not just like you are transformed, like become a nice person. To become the disciples of God is like to change you inside out, from your value system to everything you do. So, are you ready for that? So, if you have been following Christ for a long time, if you have already following Christ, but you have never changed, there's some problem. Maybe there is like you have never really surrendered everything to Christ. So, I want to encourage you. This is the season of Lent. We are waiting for the resurrections of Jesus again. We are waiting for Him. We want to remember Him. 
that this is a time for us to evaluate our spiritual life as well. Are you a follower of Christ? Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for today that we can come and learn how to follow you. No, we know we know that to follow you is not an easy task. But Lord, help us and mercy on us that we can try. Maybe we may make some mistakes, but let us to come. But we need to have the heart of acts of like surrendering everything to you. Lord, help us. Be with us. You know, we, we want to be transformed more like you. Then people will be attracted by us to you. Lord, help us as a church, as the body of Christ. Lord, let us to be rise up for you, to be ready to be transformed, be more like you. Lord, even it is hard, but Lord, this is a mission for us. Lord, may you come and help everyone. Father, thank you. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. At the moment, I'm awake. It seems that we lost the sound. Okay, so we 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 can be done in here for the responsive song. Uh, so, um, uh, Stephen can do the same. Well, for then for the offerings, I just want to remind everybody, for those who would like to give an offering to uh, us, uh, church, please choose one of the followings. And um, one way it would definitely be uh, through Interact eTransfer, which is the most simple way. Um, you can um, email it to inquiry at tcmt.ca. Uh, another way would be mailing the church, I mean, mailing this check to the church office. Um, and as well, you could actually personally drop off the check to the church office. However, if you do choose that uh, option, please call um, to church office first, just in case that there, there's somebody to open the door for you. Let's prepare our heart and have um, pray the, the Lord's Prayer together. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let's receive the benediction by faith. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord live up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. some announcement and would like to bring to everybody's attention so just to say good morning everyone and uh, still happy Chinese New Year if you are still you know Chinese usually we do uh, celebrate until the 15th of uh, the, the Chinese New Year month anyway so um, the first things we'd like to bring everyone's attention is the art fellowship um, some of you may or may not know, we actually have our fellowship, so you can join our fellowship and it's happening on uh, this coming one would be Tuesday, February the 23rd. Uh, no, it's not 2020, it's 2021. Um, so 8 a.m., um, 8 a.m., uh, 8, 8 p.m. So it will be doing through Zoom um, for our creative writing for worship. Okay, uh, and the speaker would be Nikki this time. Another one would like to bring to your attention is we actually do have Sunday schools, yes. Um, however, some of the Sunday schools actually doesn't happen on Sundays. However, we, we do have a few different Sunday schools. The first one would be uh, Cairo's Sunday schools. So that would be mostly for the university students. And that would be on Sunday night, starting from 8.30 uh, p.m. and it's on Zoom. The working adult group also have their uh, Sunday school. However, their Sunday school could probably be more like a, a Bible study. So it will be on a Wednesday. It's not on a Sunday and it's at 8 p.m. on Wednesday. You, uh, United Sunday School, it's for grade eight to um, grade six to eight and it's every Sunday from 3 p.m. And high school Sunday school, it's actually on Monday and it's at 4.15 p.m. on Zoom. Actually, it's on Sunday though. <laughs> oh, it's on Sunday as well? Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. I think that would be um, all the information that regarding to the announcement and um, on your screen it will show for the next week's um, responsibility so please mark mark yourself uh, if it's or your name it's on there so with a moment of silence prayer we will conclude the service and we would have a time for the breakout room um, so if you do have time we would gladly be you know Stay, stay, stay after, and then you we can discuss a bit more. Um, if you don't have time, uh, we we do understand. 